Memphis, and we are the first in the new rudder design team. Let's see. So we are actually contacted by Carnival through a university sanctioned project to produce a new rudder system and a testing method that improves the turning efficiency of the vessel while also not mitigating or increasing any other added drag effects or eddy current effects or any sort of effect that would alter the normal operation of the vessel other than improving the turning performance. All right, so as Josh said, based on this project, we um, researched the rudder efficiency while turning at different angles and also just straight ahead. And we designed and prototyped uh, a new rudder for a vessel, and then we also had a bunch of other ideas that we weren't fully able to do because of time. And we 3D printed um, both the hull and rudder, which you can see down there, and that's what we use for testing. And we also had to construct a testing environment in order to test our rudders and hull. And Lastly, we tested them both in CFD and uh, wave tank to get a both um, empirical and physical measurement compared. So, okay, so our rudder needed to improve fuel efficiency, of course. It needed to have modular attachment device that could be easily be removed and serviced and everything. And it also needed to be cost effective and actually be worth in selling an old vessel or a new vessel. So for our specifications, we have a we 3D printed a hole, our model hole, with a length of 100 or 930 millimeters by 117 millimeters by 89 millimeters, and we had to design it so that it had a max operating speed of 20 knots. For our, uh, thankfully for our project, we didn't have any many uh, regulations dealing with the design of a rudder since the standard design hasn't been modified in so long. Um, we only had two, we had two standards up there that are not pertinent to the actual rudder, but the rudder angle indicators. So. And then our project constraints, we had um, no limitation to the actual design of the rudder itself. We basically were given an open mind as far as what it could be and all that. And the only limitation we had was placement, and it couldn't be below the keel for dry docking reasons. And then all the codes as far as being able to turn and performance had to be followed for a standard rotor. Okay, so here's our project schedule and dance chart. So we just um, set like what we believe each task would take and have it ahead of time scheduled so that we would get everything done on time. You can see our um, Try to report presentation. Oh, okay. But anyway, we made that today, obviously. It's the most important thing we made. So our team lead, Josh Tyler, was in charge of 3D, or designing the 3D hole, or the model hole. And uh, in order to do that, once he designed the hole, he had to convert it to STL files in order to 3D print. Uh, once we assembled, assembled the hole, we applied paint and a clear, a clear coat, green grade. A marine grade clear coat in order to decrease the friction. Um, we chose this design, our slanted uh, angle, or adjustable angle rudder design, because it was the most cost efficient and uh, effective design according to our research design process, or design research process, and we, uh, I think that's about it. <laughs> All right, so this is our engineering's task mapping. As you can see, our overall goal is to increase the rudder efficiency. And we have three sections that we're going to try and to get to combine to get to that result. Our first section is our testing method, wherein Austin Weigel was in part on the testing method of the tow tank to build and assemble it and intercommunicate with Team 3 on getting that joint project done, because that was a joint project between us, Team 4, and Team 3 to get the tow tank setting operatable so we can both test our vessels and our rudder designs. The obtaining scale of the rudder model was my... Uh, responsibility. I was the one who built all the solid works, uh, construction drawings, the assemblies, the part files, and everything. And as well, I also scaled everything to the scale you see here, which is our arm field model that we have in the fluids lab, just scaled down to about 60% or 40% of what the actual size of the model is. And the same scale goes for rudders. And then our performance testing methods for efficiency, Mr. Stoll and Mr. Cervantes were on top of that. They were the ones in the lab testing and getting everything. All of our physical, or not our physical data, but our physical testing done for the R model itself. 
And then the rudder design, of course, uh, me and Aaron were part of the original scaling for when we had a cruise vessel. And now that since of complications with actually modeling the cruise vessel in SOLIDWORKS, we decided to run with the arm field, which we already had a STL, or not an STL, but an SPE file for that we could easily convert to SOLIDWORKS and manipulate with these so that we can get a better product out. And then our mathematically, or mathematical preliminary calculations and the theoretic theory design testing, I was in charge of. So I did all the preliminary checkings to make sure that one, our design theory actually was something that may show a increase in rotor efficiency, just on a theoretical standpoint. And then two, have some preliminary analysis that there's some simple calculations to kind of prove the choice behind our design. And then as well, we have the model hole, which Mr. Weigel was in charge of getting kind of ready using the, his SPE file and stuff for the conversion into SOLIDWORKS. And then the plant med, plan method for printing, that was all Mr. Stoll. I gave him all the SPL files and he was in charge of printing this hole you see in front of you and getting it assembled. So for our bill of materials, which is our cost of our overall, overall cost of our project, this relatively cheap project. It only cost $35 to, to actually print the, the model hole and the, the rudders. Um, you'll see up there that we have something listed, or the pipes and valves listed at $708. That was provided to us by the Ocean Engineering Department. So our, our project is overall relatively cheap. Okay, so these are our initial construction drawings. As you can see, these rudders that you have in front of you on the half end of this model right here are listed up here with their dimensions and scaling. So. That's roughly, all those dimensions you see there are in millimeters, so that's roughly how, or not millimeters, centimeters, or inches, sorry, my bad. Those are inches, and that's the inch definitions of each of the rudders. As you can see, the, tor the tip core and the root core, that's about a 0.57 aspect taper ratio, which is what we use for this profile. And we also used a NACA 0025 uh, root profile, which you can see on the very top here. It's just that curvature, a basic, very basic rudder design. And then this picture you see behind, below these two rudders get, uh, drawings is a pick, or the initial SOLIDWORKS drawing of this hole you see in front of you with the rudders attached. And then this is our um, build plan for it, and it was fairly simple thanks to um, Dr. Gabriel for letting us use the three printer and I guess really testing the limits of it. And we basically had to three print the hole, and I think that process alone was about a week and a half of print time, so it took a while to print a lot of time to lap messing with that. But then once it was printed, we had to print, and I think we did four sections, I think, so we just had to glue it all together once it was printed, because we were only allowed like maybe a foot section at a time. And then for the rudder, it was just the same process, just built, um, press a button and wait, and hopefully it doesn't mess up. There was a lot of trial and error and going back and adjusting, playing with the settings to get it on really good print and stuff. We learned a lot with the 3D printing process. Okay, so we um, modified the wave tank in the fluid slab so that it can have bi-directional flow so we can test the flow across the rudder. We used four inch schedule 80 PVC as well as six inch PVC. We hooked up to a pump that uses 208 volts. We had a VFD used to change the flow rate. We, um, yeah, that's pretty much what we did with that. A lot of work went into that. Okay, so one of our first tests that we did with our model hole was computational fluid dynamics testing via SOLIDWORKS. And as you can see here, oh, I'm sorry. This seems to be messed up. Anyways, okay, well, these uh, <coughs> test plan essentially with the CFD was to get a initial basis based off our preliminary calculations that we could use for the physical testing. So that way we could get some empirical data that shows whether or not our physical testing will prove that this rudder is more efficient or albeit less efficient if so happens, but it did not happen. Anyway, so as you can see, these two pictures, the left hand side and the right hand side are both the slanted rudders isometric uh, pressure profiling across them. And I don't have the standard rudder picture here because it would show up, but for some reason the file was lost. But essentially, as you can see right here, the pressure is very low according to that scale right there. That's all in uh, Pascal scale. So this is all Pascal. 
So the blue means really low pressure, green is medium pressure, and yellow is really high pressure. Thankfully there's no red because that's danger pressure. And as you can see with the, the slanted rotor design on the inside, there's not really much pressure. And on the outside flat edge, there's not much pressure. But on the very tip outside edge where the starts to curve is the highest center of pressure. And with the standard rudder, that pressure is actually divided all the way across the vertical section. So there's a significant pressure reduction in the slanted rudder versus the standard just vertical up and down rudder. Okay, so for um, wave tank testing, we use two strain gauges or bow cells that are each made up of four strain gauges set up in a weak stone bridge which has opposite ends will have a change in resistance when the strain gauge deforms due to stress on the um, oh, two piece of aluminum. So that creates a voltage difference that you can then use um, computer programs like compared to a known value that will give you a force. So we use that to measure the perpendicular force to the pole top of that part. Okay, so continuing with the CFD analysis, this is actually our results from certain calculations. This one graph you see right here is the pressure across the vessel. The left side is the bow of the ship, and as you go further right, it's towards the aft. The blue line represents our slanted rudder at 30 degrees, and the yellow slash orange line is the regular rudder at 30 degrees, so full part over. And as you can see near the bow of the vessel, the pressures roughly stay the same same through the middle and then once you get to the aft end there's a significant drop in the slanted rudder versus the regular rudder in pressure reduction and as you can see that seems to be fairly efficient and we did about that test was about 500 iterations so that's an average of all those iterations so on average it was about 30 percent more efficient and then that picture over there on the left is just a visual representation of what each test looked like with a flow profile going across the rudders. And then continuing on with this, this graph right here is the uh, another pressure. Uh, this one is at, I believe it's 15 degrees. Let me check. No, that's 25 degrees. And that one was a little bit similar, but it showed more variance in the peaks. And I believe that was just due to the iterational software of CFD because most of the averages were right in the middle. Just some high points and lows just because of random iteration is generating a really high point. And then this graph over here on the right is the velocity in the Z direction, which we used for the Z direction was the front end of the ship going through the ship to the rudders. And as you can see, it starts off fairly normal. And then once we get to the end, the velocity decreases just because of all the drag and we can't accomplish, we don't have any propulsion on this ship. So that obviously the velocity is gonna decrease quite significantly. But as you can see, the yellow line being the regular rudder and the blue line being the slanted rudder, we didn't really lose any velocity at all in the Z direction. So basically on a performance standpoint for uh, regular just moving the vessel and actually when you're just not even turning, you're not gonna lose any added or lose any performance just in standby conditions. I'm actually gonna pass around the hole real quick. We just talked about how we have these attachments and everything and being able to change our rudder angles. So as you can see, we have our standard rudders here. We have our angled rudders down here. So each yeah. one's gonna turn on its shaft. So you can turn it just like that to see. Uh, you can take them out, kind of just play with it. It's like a nice big Lego set for you. This is gonna be our slanted rudder design. And this is our standard rudder. So the time of the start varies a little bit because as you can see here, as the video starts, I'm taking my hand off and you can start to see a turn on the bow versus this one over here. Watch when my hand takes off. See how long it's taking it to start turning. Both of these are at a 30 degree angle. And there it goes, now it's starting to turn. So we took a close analysis of it. We found out that the slanted rudders start turning about one second after I released my hand from the ship versus the standard rudders that took six seconds after. And so that's me not adding any force on either side, just straight up on it. And that speaks for itself. You can kind of see our setup. So there's this crossbar here with a rope hanging down so that we can control where our ship is. This doesn't affect the turning rate because the rope is able to slide across this crossbar, not affecting it, it just keeps it from uh, falling back. And as you can see down here, these are our string gauges. And same thing, so we have rope 
attached to the stern, and they, we have a little eyelet that you see on the hole over there, that we were able to attach to, and we just kept, like I said, we just kept the rope up there to help prevent any backward motion to affect the test. The next one. Yeah. Next one are, is our diamond bolt. So this one right here, we have both our slanted rudder and our standard rudder at 30 degrees. This is just a side by side comparison. This one's just a standard rudder. We're just trying to see the difference in the eddies, and hopefully we get a good one coming soon. Sadly, the video is not on display as well, but you kind of see it as it goes by. You'll see like a light gray, and then all of a sudden it'll get darker. That's because the dye is swirling right there, and it's creating more layers of dye, making it darker. So what we're looking for, these test results didn't give us as much data as we hoped, but after multiple test trials, we did start to notice that the standard rudder produced more eddies closer and further away. So we didn't realize this at first, when we were doing all the testing, but the eddies don't just start and stop within a short frame from the ship. It actually continues on for a long time. You can see that in the white thing, which is pretty interesting. Okay. Oh, so this is our stream gauge data that we have. Planted right rudder right 30 degrees and standard rudder right 30 degrees. As you can see, the lowest force that we have when starting it was about seven versus this one over here, which started out during the turn at three. And the overall peak at the final of the turn was higher too. And so, that's a quick one. If you, if you want to use this one, sometimes it's easier. Yeah. Uh, perfect, thank you. So as you can see, overall, even in a trend line, we have better turn rate due to the force on the stern with the slanted rudder than we do in the standard rudder. So as you can see, there's a couple bumps here and there, most notably towards the end, because as it's trying to turn, it's being moved because the bow and the stern are not able to stay in the same spot because it is flowing. We have some hiccups with it, but after multiple attempts, this is the average of all of it. Sadly, we weren't able to fully make it a nice curve, but it just, in general, shows that we have more force on the stern by the rudder for our sighted design than our standard design. And yeah, this was our uh, risk assessment for our project. And uh, we had four main risks. And um, the first one was testing success. And in order to mitigate this, we had um, multiple tests as far as we had CFD to the tank. And we also were um, planning on doing a, um, a smoke tape, uh, test, which was basically the same thing as the wave, except it's air but it's fluid and then we also were going to get to the pool at that time but fortunately we ran out of time for that and then um, on time scheduling was our second one and jacob was our microsoft project guy and almost daily keeping up with it and keeping us on track and making sure we don't run out of time and get the project done and then rudder efficiency was uh, another one and we had each one of us came up with our own design so um Boggles was the Boggles idea was the science one was to not prove efficient. We had um, four more other designs that were prepared to print and get ready to go for testing. And then lastly was um, heart malfunction, and we just had um, I think two sets of both rotors in case something were to break or something like that, just so we're not waiting another day for printing and would set us back. So we we're prepared for that as well. Okay, so this is our team member design contribution. Hi, Joshua Tart. I was the team lead, project manager. I did a lot of research on the rudder design theory, and then I was the head CFD guy and the SolidWorks creator. So I did all the preliminary analysis and the SolidWorks calculations. Mr. Weigel here, he was our researcher. His design was the design we chose as a team to follow through with. He was also the inner team communicator with the other rudder design team. And he was a tester as well with Mr. Stoll and Mr. Cervantes in the physical testing. And he also helped Mr. Stoll with some of the 3D printing. And Mr. Aaron Batten, he was a big researcher into the rudder design theory as well. He also did a design that was our second best choice with if Mr. Weigel proved to be less efficient than a standard rudder. Mr. Batten's was the next best choice. He was also our accountant taking care of all the numbers and making sure that our budget was pretty low because we wanted to have as low of a budget as possible. And then he also helped with some of the physical testing and Mr. Stoll with the 3D printing. 
And then of course, Mr. Stoll, he did research, he had his own design. He was the schedule man, so he kept us all on track and made sure the project schedule was up to date. And he was the main guy with the 3D printing, making sure that every part printed well, printed on time, and was able to be assembled in a reasonable fashion. And then Mr. Cervantes, he did a bunch of design work. He tested a lot of the research that went into his design and all of our designs to make sure that every design would prove or theoretically prove to be more efficient. He also tested with the physical testing as well. And he helped Mr. Stoll with the 3D printing because it was quite a lot of work to get all the 3D printed stuff ready and making sure that it printed properly. It required constant uh, attention to detail and uh, observation. So what we found out was our slanted rudder did work. So despite what everyone was thinking that it would affect, it act more like an elevator versus a rudder, just, it didn't happen. The CFD proved it, the weight tank proved it. It was just overall uh, success for us. So the greater forces proved that, the drag testing we did proved it, all that good stuff. So the recommendation we have is when you're trying something like this, allow yourself a little more time for uh, <laughs> printing out and everything, we didn't realize how long it would take because we planned on testing all of our different rudder designs, but we just didn't have the time for it because it took us like a couple hours just to print uh, one set of the rudders that you see over there. So just allowing more time for the 3D printing and for the overall testing. All right. Well, thank you all. Do you have any questions? That's the most so what we have on right now are the standard rudders, just at some smaller angle. We weren't able to find our little protractor that we were using the other day, so guesstimation about 20 to 25 degree deflection on it. And so how we have it set up right now is we have our bow connected to this crossbar up here to keep it in line when we're starting. And But it still allows it to shift over and turn naturally, unlike using like a stronger wire or something that keeps the bow stationary. Back here we have our two strain gauges perpendicular to the tank, so that way we can test the perpendicular force on the stern that's being uh, acted on by the rudders. So, so you can see it does kind of wiggle, wiggle a little bit while it's trying to settle in the string, but you can notice the bow turning due to the rudder, and we do have some strain gauge data. Uh, sadly we're not able to justify right now because we're not able to justify what angle we're on, but this is the... This is what we did for the testing. We also have our die right here. Yeah. So for this, we want to make sure that it's in line because all we want to see are the eddies by the actual rudders and not so much the bow as it's stern. So hopefully you get a good one going. So I'm going to inject the die right behind, well, technically in front of the rudders see if we can get a good eddy going on. So you can kind of see it happening. As you can see, it's swirling. And it, you can see it all the way back here. And you can just see that swirling. So that's part of what we were trying to mitigate. Because what these create is it creates a large drag force, which then increases your fuel consumption as you're flowing through the water. And the only other test that we were really able to do, but sadly we weren't able to get good data on it, was a drag force test in which we took one of these strain gauges and actually put it on the crossbar, mm -hmm. had the rudders in the neutral position, mm -hmm. and then let it just go back and see what the maximum force was. Mm -hmm. We weren't able to get a very accurate one on that, sadly, so we left that one out because it's just inconclusive and wasn't had a lot wasn't of bouncing as well. Yeah, a lot of bouncing. I think there's a bit of a wave in the tank coming yeah. through. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to really simulate here is at this speed, we're going for no more than 20 knots realistic. So if this was an actual cruise vessel and was actual size, it would be going about 20 knots. So this is what the wave, or what the wave tank is able to simulate for us with the pump running. Mm -hmm. Or a value near. Or a value near. The closest and we can get without over three boarding. We can actually, due to our design, I got the right one. That's the right one. So generally, to change our rudders, we take this whole thing apart, lift it out, measure it to get it accurate. But for this one, kind of eyeball a little bit more so that way you can kind of see the deflection. 
And with our modular design, we're able to just take one out, put the next one in, and begin testing. So, so that way there's not as much downtime in between so that way our results are as close as possible, especially the eddy results, which can now test on our slanted rudder here. As you can see, there's just a lot less and a lot less going further down. So this just shows that it reduces the drag in the water as it's moving. And once again, sadly, it's not like as accurate because I'm not able to measure the precise angle right now. But that's what we were able to conclude from our previous test. The shaft that's going into the stern, would that have...